My name is Trey Finn, CEO of uh, Trius Cakes, which was established, um, I could say, three years back. Mm -hmm. So, Trey Finn, tell us a bit about your early life. Uh, when were you born? Your parents? Okay, my mother was given up in marriage when she was uh, 11 years old. Like, um, my grandparents were given some some food stuff by the, a certain man and uh, in return they promised to give him a wife who was not born yet. So later on when they gave birth to this girl child they raised her up to the age of 11 then they sent her off to a husband and there she had um, eight children and then uh, the husband was abusive because um, him looking at her, he was looking at a child. So he did treat her like a child. So in the end, she then ran away. She ran away and uh, went to Kwekwe. When she got to Kwekwe, that's where she met my dad. And my dad had also divorced from his previous marriage. So when they met, when they, met they just had me and me alone. So they later separated. I'm told they separated when I was three days old. And um, from there on, I was raised by her. I was raised by the single mother. And um, life was just not easy. It was not easy. I, I, I saw it all. Well, there, there is no poverty that can shock me. <laughs> I know it all. <laughs> I've seen poverty. I've experienced poverty. Also, I went to school with no shoes. I wore only one uniform. That's what she could afford. Um, and I would wear dresses to school. And uh, I think back then, the, the teachers did not fussy. Because um, I think they just knew that everyone was, was suffering. But our suffering was worse. <laughs> it was like really deep. I mean, being raised by a single mother who never went to school, the only thing that she knew of was to buy and sell. So in the end, we resorted to farming. When I was in the rural areas, we resorted to farming. When I was in grade four, she gave me a piece of land. So that piece of land, I would um, uh, do sweet potatoes and um, would sell by the roadside. Some would sell in Kwekwe uh, town. And um, I started paying my school fees at that age, at grade four. And I had uh, the free range chickens that would produce eggs and I would sell eggs to the teachers. Um, so that was it, like in the, in the rural areas. Then after I had completed my grade seven, my mother then said, I think I've, I've, I've done my part as a single mother. I don't think I'll be able to do, to send you to secondary school. Maybe your father should chip in. So I then went to Kwekwe. That's where my father was. He was working at Cisco Steel. I went to Kwekwe when I got there. I told him the story, everything. And his answer was, I have no money to waste educating a girl child. Nothing good will come out of a girl child. If only you were a boy, maybe I would. So, so later on, I was staying with my aunt, my aunt being my father's sister in, in Bezo section. And then I then looked for a job. I was age 12, 13. I then looked for a job and I started working as a maid at uh, Kwekwe Technical College. I was working for a lecturer. So I worked there for one year and um, I was raising money for Form 1 because I really wanted to, do, to go to school because um, I came up with four units, grade 7. One, one in Shona, one English, one Condent and uh, one mates. Then we're doing four, four subjects. Mm -hmm. So I really wanted to go to school. So later on, my auntie said, um, 
you can go to Gwanda. Gwanda, there was my brother, my stepbrother. We shared the same father. He was working at Blanket Mine, underground manager there. So I went to Gwanda. With the money that I'd saved since I'd worked for one year as a maid, it, it, it wasn't much really. So I managed to buy a few, a few clothes for myself and I sent some money to my mother back home in the rural areas. And some I used as bus fare, some I used to buy uniforms. And the money got finished. So when I got to Blanket Mine, I narrated the whole deal. I was, I was welcomed well. Uh, narrated everything that what I'm here for is for you to take me to school. And my brother agreed. He said, I have no problem in taking you to school. So, so the next day, we woke up, we went to go look for place for Form 1. And I got it. I was enrolled at Saviwa Secondary School. It's in the outskirts of, outskirts of uh, Gwanda Blanket Mine. Uh -huh. So then, my brother then said, all right, now that you got a place, I'll send you to school. In return, what are you going to give me? Uh, I was 13, I think. Yeah, I was 13. And I'm like, I was so excited that for, for taking me to school, I, I, I really, <laughs> in your old age, you won't suffer. <laughs> and he was like, no, it's not what I mean. I mean uh, payment. I don't mean payment at a later stage. The payment I'm talking about is, is, is now, is a now payment. Well, I didn't know what he was talking about because I was, I was young then. He then said uh, he wanted to sleep with me um, in return for the school fees and everything. Then, uh, well, I was raped. He did rape me. And um, each and every time school fees was due, You'd tell me that you know what to do. So it went on for a year. And up, up until the headmaster of where I was, the headmaster was transferred and they came a lady, headmistress. Right. I then wrote a letter to her narrating my whole story. Say, if you can allow me to learn without, me, without you chasing me away for school fees, because my story at home is like this. I narrated everything in that letter, and I slid it under the door. Then um, the next day, I was then called from the classroom by a prefect. I went to the head's office. There I found there were cops, and in, in the schoolyard there was a Santana, and the headmistress just said, it's okay, you're going with them. So when I go to the Sandana, in there, I found my brother was already there, handcuffed. He'd been arrested. We then went home, and I was asked to pick all my belongings. I picked everything. Then I went to Gwanda Town. There I stayed uh, with a female officer, I think for a week, until I was then taken to John Smell home. It's a home in, in, in Barham Green. Mm -hmm. I was on, I was taken there to an orphanage home. So staying there, the orphanage, there were so many projects going on. Various projects were being trained in farming, sewing, baking. And um, baking started in that home when I was uh, in Form 2. The, I remember one matron uh, said she, she wanted to coach me to be a baker. And we had no resources. We had no ingredients whatsoever. So we would move in uh, BG, asking for ingredients from, from some ladies who were willing to give us. So I remember one time I baked a cake. Uh, there was a competition at the trade fair. Is it the, the warm industry something? I baked a cake and took it there and it won. So when that cake won, when I was in Form 2, I, I was excited. It, it, it gave me the wings to say, so, so I can do this. If, if I can bake a cake and beat uh, uh, old la older ladies, me being a, a Form 2 student, so it means I can do this. It means I can even do this for a living. 
if everything else fails in the event that I finish school. So baking continued, we would bake as, uh, during the weekend as, as students. Um, and then later on, after, um, after I had completed my, um, after I had completed secondary, I then uh, went into nursing. Uh, nursing, while I was still there, I remember I was working for a certain uh, doctor, Dr. Msia, a dental surgery. Then later I got married. So a few years after marriage, my husband then um, uh, wrote a resignation letter to my boss to say, I have no wife who works, I'm capable of taking care of you. So I left my job and I became a stay-at-home mom looking after kids. And then life became tough. <laughs> it was just not easy. And then I could see that poverty back then was creeping in. <laughs> I saw it coming. <laughs> and I, I'm like, no, this is not the life that I want. I, I can't go back there. Then I realized, no, I can't. I can't live in poverty anymore. So I remember meeting with my friend Ruth. She, 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 she's now in Arari. We we're going to the same church, Christ Embassy. So we met in town on a Monday after Sunday service. I'm like, uh, my, my sister, let's, let's do something. We can't continue staying at home. Let's do something to better ourselves. Because each time we see other people giving offering, we are like, hey, like you feel like a nobody. Mm -hmm. So I, we then decided we would do cakes for a living. So back then I had nothing. I remember I had two cups of flour. That was meant for fat cooks, <laughs> for the children's lunch boxes. So I went home, the two cups flour, my friend Ruth bought, um, bought eggs and a pint of milk. And I went home, I baked one cake. The next day we met in town. We cut slices and we sold that cake. It got finished, I think, within an hour. Then we bought uh, ingredients for the next orders. The next day, we were on two cakes. By the end of the month, we were selling like 10 cakes. Mm -hmm. That's how it began. Then I uh, then realized, no, this was now tiresome. I had built clientele. So I decided to then beg from home, like just wait for orders for people to place orders, then I beg. Then while I was there, I realized that um, it was during the time of load shedding, like this, I would go around 2 p.m. So I'd come into town looking for ingredients. And you look for ingredients from one corner to the next. By the time you get home, it's, it's one o'clock and you're only left with an hour. Then I decided, uh, let me stock my ingredients in bulk from SA. So I then started buying in bulk. Then later on, looking at those ingredients, I'm like, these are now so many. Why don't I look for a corner and start selling ingredients and also bake? That's how this business started, of baking ingredients. Then in that corner, I remember <coughs> I was in the corner, I was at uh, Laksa House. Um, and business grew until the corner was too small. I then looked for a place at uh, CIPF building. That's where we are now. Uh -huh. How has been business since you started, when you moved here from, from the corner? How has been business here? So when I moved here, the, from the corner to here, like uh, Many customers, some, some were not aware that we well, there's nothing in the one month. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's okay, you don't need to. It was really tough. Mm -hmm. it was really tough. Uh, we we, we uh, left, um, we we left um, yeah. we for we such a place. Uh, but some were not coming. So when we uh, then I see them, so in one month, two months, so it was not easy. So from the third month onwards, it then peaked. Customers started coming. Mm -hmm. Given the, the, the struggles you, you went through in your life, 
What would you say to other women to the girl child who would have similar Hello. Oh, I know you. Thank you. I managed to do my business. Um, children are normally taken I mean, to I mean. <laughs> Like, <laughs> you struggle with yeah. yes. yes. uh, yes. yeah. 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 here. Yeah. 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 You go on in life and you carry on. What happened to me has been the driving force behind, behind my hard work. I had poverty. I had poverty, I had passion. And I don't wish to see what I want to do happening to anybody. So I also want to see to the women, the, the, the married women. Well, Wedding men want to I can tell you I can tell you that 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 I don't mean that you should be uh, be uh, irrespectable I your husband. I just mean that I, I, I think they don't see the, the, the bigger picture. Yes. They see Konapa yes. Konapa <laughs> deals. These and ones, these are the same. So, so whatever that you food cakes. wish to do in life, also you can just go for them. I remember when I got into this and I got into this and rent is um, this is perfect for making pies. For pies? Yes, for pies. It's, it's like margarine for me. Mm -hmm. It's called perfect. Mm -hmm. so, these are odds. We've got uh, some things for baking different yes, things. Yes, yes, yes. There are some no, some cakes where we use uh, one standard where you use no, this to bake. There's no one standard. There's no one standard, not at all. <laughs> so there's a bit of science to it. Yes, yes. Lots, lots. <laughs> so, woman, if if you were to pick a Bible verse, what would you? What which one would you want to share with? Joel two twenty five. Joel two twenty five. The Lord says, I will restore you all the years that has been eaten by the swarming locusts. The, the Lord did restore me. I did cry. I, 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 I did all. Oh. The Lord has restored me. He is a faithful God. Indeed, He is. Thank you. Thank you for your time.